when I was in high school, they created this thing. And I still haven't figured out what to do with it. But I know there are young people who do. <laughs> in fact, today, on this Sabbath, um, we are going to um, will be led by the CCA team, especially the seniors, as it's the senior rec. And I'm going to invite uh, um, one of our elders and a papa um, of one of our senior class. We have, what is it, happy in happy's pappy. So. Thank you. I assume you meant me. OK. Well, I just want to say good morning and happy Sabbath to everyone who's here. I haven't got much to do today, so this is my one opportunity to say welcome. Uh, when my family and I moved here to Wenatchee about 30 years ago, something like that, we enjoyed every year seeing the senior recognition, seeing these guys who worked very hard to get through school. We've seen a lot of wonderful kids come across this stage, and it uh, turns out we actually have one up here today as well, which we are very proud of. So. I just, this time I just want to ask you guys to um, give some honor to the senior class of 2024 and I'm going to say a quick prayer of blessing for them. Dear Father in heaven, thank you so much for the Sabbath day, for the chance to worship you in the, your house. Thank you for these great kids, Lord. Help them to honor you in their lives and their actions and all that they do. Bless them in a very special way. Amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Oh, we can, we can do that better. Good morning and happy Sabbath. <laughs> Wonderful. Our first song today is Reckless Love of God. And I am just, um, I think this is one of the first songs that was suggested when we first started Praise Team. I'm uh, really happy to be joined by Mia and Christina and Hallie and Mrs. Gable this morning as we sing. So. Please join with us in singing.
Amen. And our next song is going to be, How Great is Our God. Now, um, I had the brilliant idea of having my student worker put this in alphabetical order. And um, now I'm realizing that my ability to use alphabetical order is not, um, not as good as her ability to sort it. together. The splendor of a king clothed in majesty. Let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. Wait, hold up. Okay. This week's uh, offering is for the global mission. In the late 1800s and early 1900s, the Seventh-day Adventist Church sent missionaries to share the story of Christ around the world. After developing schools, orphanages, churches, and hospitals, there was a need to bluster support of all the efforts worldwide. Still, there are three billion people who live in regions that don't have easy access to the story of Christ. Let's participate and support the global ministry today. Will the deacons please stand as I pray? Dear Heavenly Father, please guide this offering to help people learn who you are and for them to have open hearts to learning and accepting you. May it provide support and resources to help spread the gospel worldwide. Please help us to trust in you as we give and build our faith as we sacrifice this money to help with this ministry. Please guide and protect the missionaries as they share the love of you with others. Help them to have strength, courage, and wisdom as they spread the message of you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.
It's time for children's stories, so all the kids, please come up.
raise your hand if any of you guys have seen a rodeo before. Okay, awesome. Did you know that the rodeo stars try to stay on the back of a raging bull for eight seconds, risking their lives? No? And they barely make enough money to pay their travel expenses, yet they are the most content athletes in the world. Being content means they don't complain no matter what happens. Today, Gabby is going to interview these two rodeo stars, Jim Bob and Johnny. Let's put on our hats and see what makes Jim Bob so content. Hello, rodeo fans. This is Gabby Day, welcoming you to another edition of All Pro Rodeo. We've got lots of excitement lined up for you today. All the events you know and love. We have a special guest today. Last year's world champion bull rider, Jim Bob James. Jim Bob, welcome to the show. Thank you, Gabby. Always a pleasure. Jim Bob, you've drawn a tough ride for tonight. Your old nemesis. Twisted Mister. Beg pardon there, Gabby? A bull that's given you lots of trouble in the past. Your nemesis. Well, now, Twisted Mister is one rank bull, that's for certain. So hardly never get broke by nobody. How do you feel about riding him tonight? Well, that's just the way things happen. Sometimes you draw a rocking chair that won't give you no trouble at all. Other times you get a bad one that's liable to kick you clear to Oklahoma. Ain't no use fretting about it. How do you plan to draw him tonight? Well now, I've been thinking about this for some time. He tends to go left, so I gotta ride him out of that shooting and playing on a tough left spin. Ride that boy right tonight, could be all bad at the pay window before the night's out. Last year, you had your best year ever, world champion at the national finals rodeo. Well now, Feller couldn't hardly plan on having a better year than I had last. Won lots of cash, traveled the country, meeting lots of fine folks. Enjoyed that year mighty well. This year has been something of a disappointment, however. Yeah, ain't been the best season a cowboy could hope for. But it, it started out with a broken leg in your first rodeo of the year. But broken legs heal up, and I'm riding again, so I guess it ain't all bad. Speaking of injuries, you also had three concussions, two broken ribs, and a broken jaw. Yeah, it ain't been the best season a cowboy could hope for, but everything healing up just fine. And I'm sure glad I'm riding again. A few years back, some of them little nicks could have put you out of action for a whole year. Now, things are different. In what way? Well, they got these braces and mouth shield things. Shucks, a fellow's pretty near indestructible with all this here equipment. It's been great talking to you, Jim Bob. We'll be looking forward to seeing your ride tonight. Thank you, Gabby. Always a pleasure. We're now ready for the first section of Bull Riders. This is always an exciting event. Joining me now is former bull riding great, Johnny J. Johnny J, welcome to the show. Hey there, Gabby. We got some, we got us some excitement here tonight. The old man of bullfighter greats, Jim Bob. He's got his hands full with that big Brahma, that's for sure. Twisted Mister, but that boy's capable of getting a cowboy the pay window, that's for sure. Speaking of Jim Bob, he'll be the first rider out tonight. He sure will be. Get ready. The clowns are coming out. Old Ray Couch. The grand old my, man of bullfighter greats is rolling out the barrels, and Billy Ayers and Mikey Jones, we were taking those riders to get thrown out. The clowns are ready. The judges are ready. Looking to shoot number six. We see Jim Bob wrapping the bull rope around his right hand. He looks like he's ready. He nods his head. Ooh-wee, look at that bull come out of that chute. Oh, looks like Jim Bob's in trouble. Bail out of there, boy. Get down. Billy Ayers, protect. Ouch! Looks like Twisted Mister stepped right on old Jim Bob. Let's check out that replay. You can see how Jim Bob figured Twisted Mister was gonna spin left, but that old bull outright fooled him, that's for sure. He wasn't expecting it from the start. Right here at the end, look at that. Twisted Mister stepped right on Jim Bob's boot, right on the ankle. 
He sure did. That boy's in a lot of pain. But he's a tough old boy. You know he'll be back. They're helping him out of the arena now. I'm going back to try to get a word with him, see how he is. Well, Gabby's getting down there, let's take one last look at this replay. Yeah, he definitely didn't have a chance of staying on that bull right from the get-go. That he did, right enough. What's the condition of your leg? Well, she's hurting a mite, but she's been hurt before. Ain't no use complaining about what's happened in the past. Feels like she might be broke, but we don't know for sure till the x-rays get took. It looked like Billy Ayers may have been a little late getting in there. What do you have to say about that? Billy's a good old boy. Couldn't have done much better than he did. Had it been for him, I might have been hurt a whole lot worse. Well, I'm thankful he was as quick as he was. I see the ambulance is ready to leave. Pleasure talking to you. And all you folks out there, I want to say thank you for all them prayers you've been saying for me and all them cards you've been sending. Don't you worry. Old Jim Bob will be back soon. All right. See you, Jim Bob. An amazing display of courage. Back to you, John, for the next ride. What display of courage did you hear the secret to Jim Bob's contentment? He said he was plumb thankful. In the Bible, Paul says something similar. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or want. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And the secret to being happy and content in life is, the, is to be thankful and to trust in Jesus. Let's remember that, boys and girls. And make sure to pick up a coloring page and a and that as you go back to your seats. God is mighty to save. Let us sing together, um, mighty to save.
as we open our hearts to worship this morning, um, if you guys would all stand, and we're going to sing the heart of worship, um, and just walking to God's throne and basking in his presence this morning. scripture reading today is Romans 15 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Please bow your heads with me as I had to have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you that we all made it here safely today. Thank you that it's a lovely Sabbath day, and please bless our senior recognition and help it to go well. Please watch over and guide our class this year and lead us as we begin the rest of our lives. Bless our speaker, Mrs. Gates, and bless her words, and please help them to inspire us and uplift us. Thank you for the many gifts you have given us. Help us to use them for your glory. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Are you? 
gentlemen, it is my absolute honor to introduce a woman who has not only been my loving mother for the past 18 years, but has also served as my principal in the school of life. Her love, guidance, and wisdom have shaped my journey. Mrs. Gates received her Bachelor of Science in Elementary Education with minors in Health and Early Childhood from Walla Walla University. Later, she went on to receive her Master's in Educational Leadership the day before I was born, also from Walla Walla University. She has been here at CCA for 12 years and plans to be here, God willing, until she retires. Please join me in welcoming an amazing woman, my mom, who our entire class admires and is invited to speak today. They already have me crying. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for asking me. It was a huge honor when I got called up to Mr. Ringering's room and you all sat there looking at me and laughing and I walked in and that didn't make me feel uncomfortable at all. Um, but thank you, thank you for asking me to, to share because I've probably um, had lots to say to you through the years but you still wanted to hear more from me and so I'm so thankful for that and grateful for that. Um, it's a momentous, are you laughing at me again? <laughs> Great. Okay, today's a big, a big deal, because you guys are a big deal. Um, it's a celebration not just of, you know, the things academically that you have accomplished, but it's a recognition of the unique journey that God has had the five of you on, as well as a celebration of where God is going to take you. And... Some of my favorite things about you individually and collectively is your joy. And you've displayed that mostly today. Um, if I, when I looked up biblical joy, it said that it's often associated with a deep and abiding sense of happiness and contentment that goes beyond mere fleeting emotions. 
It's considered a spiritual state of well-being and gladness that arises from a connection with God or the fulfillment of God's promises. And the Bible frequently speaks about joy as a fruit of the Spirit. Remember? The fruit of the Spirit's not a coconut. Fruit of the Spirit's not a coconut. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, In Galatians. But it is emphasizing that it is a quality that emerges as a result of the presence of God in your life. It's not just about the external circumstances, but it's really rooted in your relationship with God and an understanding of who he is to each of us individually. David talked about this in Psalm 1611 when he said, You make known to me the path of life. You fill me with joy in your presence and with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Jesus also talked about joy, highlighting that true and lasting joy that comes from abiding in his teachings and having a relationship with him. In the Bible, joy is often seen as a deeper and more enduring state of happiness. That's you guys, enduring happiness, that goes beyond our circumstances. Now, some of you may be wondering if I actually know your class as I'm saying all of this. And you may be wondering if I'm truly speaking to you, or maybe I just went on to chat GPT and asked them to make a sermon for me. Well, you're wrong. I didn't. But I see joy within each and every one of you. Within the person that God has created you to be. And the person that God is forming you, each one of you, to be for his purpose and for your joy. Now, to get me stop crying, um, I'm going to play, we're going to play a song. But first of all, this is, I was going to maybe like lip sync it for you. (laughs) But I thought that might be a little much for church. And I still want to go on your senior trip with you. And so I didn't, I didn't want to do that. Um. So I'm going to actually have you stand because I want you to have the full big screen experience. So I'm going to have you stand up and we're going to stand right here and we're going to watch up here. Um, It's kind of an unconventional song and I really am not doing this to offend anybody. Um, It's just I wanted to you to feel the joy because this song reminds me of you guys, of your class. You guys are full of fun. You're full of laughter. I know you're nervous right now. Um, You're a little bit quirky, right? Yeah. And you're really unconventional, but you're adventurous and you're all full of joy. And so as you watch and as you listen, um, think of think of these things. Okay. All right. We'll turn around. Does that remind you of yourselves? Yeah. (laughs) Whether you want to admit it or not, it does. It does. Well, there have been some significant verses over the years that, that have had some wisdom in them and are particularly ones that some of you like. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Yes, Mia. <laughs> Jeremiah 29, 11. That's Jed and Michio. They like that one a lot. Ephesians 4. 32 and Romans 15 13 this year and I'm going to talk a little bit about these and use these to talk to you and these uh, four verses describe you as an, a class and have been important and each of you has been on a journey that is very unique to you whether you've attended CCA for five years 10 years 12 years 13 years Um, God has been with you. And as an audience, these verses might bring up some memories. They might bring to the surface highlighting peace, joy, hope, kindness, trust, or God's presence. And today I want to share with all of you who these outstanding seniors are. Who they are as individuals, but also specifically the ways God has been and will continue to lead in their lives. We think about lots of Bible, Bible characters, people that you all have studied 
about in your homes as well as in your school life. Abraham, he went on a journey uh, from Ur to Canaan and in response to God's call. And then later he also went to Egypt. And then there was Moses. He led the Israelites on a very long journey. And Joseph, he was sold into slavery and taken into Egypt. And he went on a, a journey from being a slave to becoming a very powerful figure in the Egyptian government. David, he, was, he had lots of journeys as a shepherd, and then as a fugitive, and then later as a king. Um, Ruth, she undertook a journey with her mother-in-law. Mary and Joseph traveled from Nazareth to Bethlehem. The wise men journeyed to Bethlehem. And Paul, Saul of Tarsus, undertook several missionary journeys throughout the Mediterranean region. Well, these journeys are significant aspects of the biblical narratives, often, often inspiring us as we walk through our own spiritual or life transportations. And throughout high school, God's presence has been with each one of these seniors, each one of you on your journey, offering strength when you've needed it, joy when you've succeeded, or just come to my office right? Yeah. And hope when things started out very challenging in your ninth grade year. You each have faced academic pressures, personal struggles, navigating the complexities of friendships, and the pain of losing a special classmate. But through it all, you've grown and you've learned and you've evolved into the individuals that are sitting up here right now. And I'm proud of you, truly proud of each one of you, who you are and the growth I have been privileged to watch in each one of you. Senior rec recognition in my mind kind of kicks off this party, this celebration of this last year in high school. And it's kind of exciting, and yet there are still so many amazing things ahead of you to experience. And it's not really an end, this journey of this year. It's really a bright beginning. Mia, your smile and your attitude of wanting to get to know others is a highlight that will always resonate in my memories of you. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 encourages you to trust in the Lord with all your heart, especially when the path ahead seems unclear, when being inclusive isn't always easy. This verse has, was one that you shared and was our theme verse a few years back. It brought a lot of joy that year. It's powerful when we slowly read the words and reflect on our lives and how God has been there bringing us his joy your journey, Mia, is a culmination of the choices that you make with determination and what appears to me with easy determination. And your focus is something that you maintain consistently. Watching you through the years be determined in various capacities, I prayed for you. I prayed for you, asking God to sustain this in you and to give you great joy with that. And as you step into the future, I pray that you will hold tight to the trust you place in God, guiding each and every decision, just like Abraham trusted in God's plan, even when he faced uncertainties. And as you move forward, may your spirit continue to be a guiding light, fostering connection with others and understanding. All joy in Jesus and no stress. Jedediah, I know you don't like me to call you that, but it said that up on the screen, so I thought it'd be okay. Many may not know this about you, but I've been able to observe this all your life. Um, I'm not going to embarrass you. Um, you have a very keen awareness of others' emotions, and you have a genuine concern for their well-being, maybe something that you don't always share with them. You recognize when others are not quite themselves, you ask questions, and quietly, behind the scenes, you encourage or help them. In these times where I've seen the, you do this, I prayed for you. I prayed asking God to never allow that to disappear. 
Jeremiah 29, 11 speaks to the divine plans for your future. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Your choices, your focus, and your mindset will shape this future if you keep your trust in God and keep these words in your mind. Find joy and understanding and embracing others in the path that God has uniquely designed for you. And just as Abraham followed God's plan faithfully, trust that God's purpose for your life is equally specific and purposeful. Your choices, focus, and mindset reflect that compassionate heart. And as you step into the future, may your empathy and encouragement be a large source of strength and support for those around you. All joy in Jesus, no stress. Megan. Your heart of joyful giving has been a defining feature of your journey. From the very little age of six, when I met you in Sabbath school, you demonstrated this by opening up your purse and handing out little pieces of string that you had cut for everyone. Your purse was filled with these and everyone you came in contact with got a piece of string. I prayed for you. I prayed for you as through the years I watched you continue that joyful heart of giving that has brightened so many lives. It was you who reminded us with Ephesians 4.32 to live with kindness and forgiveness. Be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another just as God through Christ has forgiven you. Your generosity is a beacon of kindness and your journey marked by your choices, your focus, your mindset, are a true testament to the beauty that giving brings. Let the virtues of this verse be your guide as you navigate the road ahead. And may your heart of giving continue to inspire and uplift those around you. In a world that often seeks turmoil, your commitment to kindness and forgiveness can and will be a beacon of light. All joy in Jesus, no stress. Ian, you know what I'm gonna ask you? Are you happy? Yes. Excellent. <laughs> Romans 15, 13 resonates with joy, a joy that comes from trusting God. And I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. And then you can overflow with confident hope through that power of that Holy Spirit. In your presence is a radiant light that brightens a room and your sense of humor is a delightful surprise that brings joy to those around you. There have been days where when I asked you, Ian, are you happy? Which I do every time I see him, didn't really match what I saw in your eyes. And in that times, I prayed for you. I prayed for you to be strengthened and sustained whatever was going on in your heart and your mind. Your journey, influenced by those choices that you make, the focus you maintain, and the mindset that you cultivate is a testament to the unique qualities you bring to the world with joy. Your journey is not a solitary one, ever. It's a shared experience with a God who is the ultimate source of joy and who delights in you, Ian. As you step into the future, may your infectious smile and subtle sense of humor continue to illuminate the lives of everyone you encounter, just as you have done at CCA. All joy in Jesus, no stress. Michigo, you are powerful and you actually scare me. <laughs> Mostly when you serve a volleyball from across the net and I'm so thankful I am not on the receiving end of that. But the power I'm referring to is your laughter. It has the power to fill the room with joy. Though you may not realize it, your laughter is a gift of joy, a genuine and heartfelt expression that enriches the lives of us, of those of us who get to hear it. Jeremiah 29 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. And this verse is a testament to the divine plan that has brought you to CCA, 
to your senior year and to this moment. That year that you were not here, I prayed for you. I prayed for you, not knowing what you may, going through, may be going through, but knowing that God held you. Your journey, with all its twists and turns, has been under the careful guidance of the one who knows the plans for each of us, but especially for you now. Your laughter and positivity fill a room with a warmth that can turn sadness into joy. This is a gift, and I believe that even though through the twists and turns maybe ahead of you, your future is filled with hope, purpose, and joy. As you see where God leads on the next phase of your journey, may your laughter remain a source of delight and a reminder of the beauty found in genuine, unrestrained joy. All joy in Jesus, no stress. Just as those Bible characters mentioned earlier did so long ago, I want you to remember to trust in the unique purpose of your lives and the positive influence that you carry with you, not only for the seniors, but for all of us as well. Trust in God's plan, even when there are uncertainties. Trust that including everyone is a plan part of his plan for each of you. Trust his plan that it is equally specific and purposeful for each of you. Trust that he delights in you and how you were made in his image. And trust God will lead you in the next phase of your life, whatever it looks like. Trust and joy are key. Trust in the wisdom that brought you here and find joy in it. Trust in the lessons learned, the friendships made, the challenges you have each overcome in your last 17 or 18 years with joy. Trust in the God of hope, joy, and peace, who has been your constant companion and will continue to light your way for the rest of your lives. As each of you moves beyond the familiar hallways of CCA, remember that your journey with God is not just about individual choices that you will make, but about the profound impact you have on the lives of others for God. You've done that at CCA. And we will never be the same. And that's a good thing. All joy, no stress with Jesus. I'm sure that you're all hoping that I will stop talking now because your stomachs are starting to grumble. And so, in conclusion, Ian, Megan, Mia, Michigo, and Jed, As you step into the future, recognize that your journey can be filled with joy. It is determined by the choices you make, by the focus you maintain, and that mindset that you cultivate with God. Trust in God's plan, just as so many before you have done, and may your individual journeys ahead be filled with purpose, success, and, in, and an enduring connection to the source of all joy. I am proud of all of you, and I love each one of you. Sorry. And you will always be in my heart and in my prayers. All joy, no stress, Ian. All joy, no stress, Michigo. All joy, no stress, Jed. All joy, no stress, Mia. All joy, no stress, Megan.
bless the Lord with our souls, with our hearts. Um, if you can all stand up and we'll sing 10,000 Reasons, praising his name. Father, as we have gathered in your presence, we want to lift up to you, Megan, Michigo, Ian, Jed, and Mia, who are embarking on their senior year journey. Lord, we know that this is a big year and a transformative time in their lives, filled with lots of challenges, but with great opportunities. I ask, Lord, that you would grant them wisdom, discernment, clarity, as they make important decisions for their future. Guide them in everything, guide their steps, and open those doors of opportunity that will align with your perfect will for their lives. And may they approach this year with diligence, seeking excellence in all that they do. Lord, I pray for strength and resilience as challenges come. Help them to overcome them and to do it with grace and determination. Continue to surround them with supportive friends, teachers, mentors who can provide encouragement and guidance along the way. Grant them a spirit of perseverance when faced with the demands of schoolwork and the pressures of decision making. Remind them that through you all things are possible and that they can find strength in times of weakness. Lord, I also want to lift up each one of their families. I want to ask that you would give them peace and reassure them as they watch their 
child navigate this season of change, and may the bonds of family and friendships remain strong, providing a foundation of support and love for each of them. Lord, I entrust the future of Ian, Mia, Michigo, Jed, and Megan into your hands, and may they find purpose and fulfillment in the paths that you have laid out for them. Help them to use their gifts and talents to make a positive impact on the world around them and remind them that you love them always and are always with them and give them joy and no stress. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>